Swanger, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Thank you. You're a man who knows an awful lot about AI and data and how that's being used in this industry now. So what do you think the approach is and how is it affecting how opportunities are spotted? Yeah, um, so data is an area that I think has grown rapidly in its use in venture over the last sort of five years. Um, we've had an in-house data scientist now for about six years. Um, and we've been sort of looking at it in lots and lots of different ways. Um, broadly speaking, I think there are sort of three ways in which it gets used in venture capital firms. The first is in sourcing, so the actual business of finding a company at all. The second is in diligence, so when you're looking at a given company, can you analyze how well it's doing? Is it the right kind of investment for you? Um, and then thirdly, it's sort of post-investment. So once you've invested in the company, you know, you're usually involved, if you're a Series A firm like ours, then for seven or eight years, obviously there's a lot of data involved in trying to help them maximize their opportunity. Um, so those are the three buckets that I think most venture firms are, are looking at with data. This industry has talked about itself being um, a, a, a people business in the past, yep. relationships, trust all being very significant factors. So for how sure. does that marry in with, with using data and, and AI, say, going forward? Yeah, I mean, for me, it, um, it marries in uh, with the outcome of me saying that I'm actually quite cynical about people who preach data only as a solution. I really don't believe that's ever going to be the case in venture. Um, venture is um, fundamentally a shoe leather business. You have to sort of get out on the street, walk around and meet entrepreneurs. Um, the reason for that is because the data signals are tiny, right? I mean, if you think about an average investment that we make, probably has a, a company with 15, 20 people doing maybe less than a million dollars of revenue. Um, there's no easy way to measure a single a signal that, that's that small. Uh, and even if you could, there'd be so many of them that you would have far too much noise to actually spot the thing that really worked. So, you know, data does work once you get to much larger companies where there's a lot more data for a given individual entity. But I think at the small scale, at the early stage, it's hard to do that. Um, but having said that, what we found is that particularly in diligencing, so comparing a company to the others we've seen like it, um, and then also after investment, helping the company think about how its business is being run and how it should improve and where it should improve. There's a lot of power in data. Um, but all of that still, you know, it's all trumped by the fact that fundamentally the most successful companies we have are ones that have an amazing team that are leading it. And um, that very, very human question is still at the heart of what we do. So team at the heart, but there's so much that's going to happen in data as well. We're just on the brink sure. really, aren't yeah. we? What are the most exciting developments you're hearing about and seeing at the moment? Yeah, I think um, the most interesting stuff is around the fact that we have um, access to more and more data sources. So historically, if you think about it, the, the, you know, the, the volume of data you had access to was relatively small and most of it was offline. So you know, theoretically, you could get access to um, company records, for example, but you'd have to write to those, you'd get those back in the postal mail. There's no way to easily access that on scale, aggregate it, get a sense of what's going, overall, going on overall. Um, now that's changed. I mean, today, most of that sort of information is available online. We operate in uh, Europe, so we invest only in European companies. And most European countries have all that sort of company data completely online now. So I think that's the big shift, is that just the sheer volume of stuff you can get access to and put straight, straight through a computer has exploded in the last five years, and that's going to keep happening. You've talked a lot about um, how the UK and, and Europe approach entrepreneurialism. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, where do you think we're at with that now? Because you've compared it with the US not favourably in the past. Yeah, yeah. No, I think, um, so, you know, I, I grew up in the UK. I left the UK in 2003 and came back in 2014. So, um, you know, I spent 10 years out. And in that 10 years, Europe um, developed at an incredible rate. Uh, when I left, the idea of being an entrepreneur was unusual, weird, often a sort of scary concept. Most people that I shared the idea of that I wanted to be an entrepreneur one day um, were puzzled by the fact that I'd even have that choice. And some people, I think, assumed it was an excuse for not having a job. Um, but the, you know, that's one of the reasons that I left and, and moved to Silicon Valley and lived there for, for 10 years. Um, Amazingly for me, when I came back in 2014, what I realized is that things have changed a lot. I think post-2008, there's been a real awakening to this idea that you can be in charge of your own destiny, that you can build companies. This concept that technology in particular gives people leverage, so you know, a small team can make a big difference. Um, and people are now very enthusiastic about it. If you talk to young entrepreneurs, people who are graduating from university right now, but also people who've been through another career already, but who are thinking about perhaps having a bigger impact in a new way, um, many of them are excited by this idea. So there's been a big change that way, but there's still a long way to go. And one of the big things for me um, is around technologists. So you know, for, if you go to America, one thing you will see is that many of the most successful tech companies have been set up by, but also run by technologists. So people who have an engineering or computer science or maths or physics or biology background. 
And this idea that they can't do business is not an idea that you hear in the halls of Stanford or MIT. Um, interestingly, in Europe, we have a bit of a counter case where there's a real belief that there's a separation, that you know, one sort of person does the technology, sits in a corner and works on that, and another person is the one who you know, does the marketing and the sales. I just don't believe that to be true. Um, I'm, I'm personally a counter case. You know, I was a CEO and did all of the sales and marketing for my business, even though I have a computer science background. And I think that until we really adopt that kind of attitude here, we'll struggle to build really large, really enduring tech companies. I think you've described it as commercializing the boffin. Precisely. Which is yeah. a lovely, uh, yeah. succinct way of putting it, isn't it? Yeah. So with that in mind, what would you say as words of encouragement to those who are currently in university and in those areas in terms of what to, to to do going forward and how to find those opportunities? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the really good news is it's way more open than it ever was. Um, but I think for me, the, the key thing is, if you look, if you're someone who loves technology and science and enjoys the essence of what you're doing intellectually in that topic area, and you're doing that at university or whatever else, then you know, I would ask you to also think about the imp implications and the extension of what you're doing. The reason why what you're doing is important is because it could have an impact on the real world. To have an impact on the real world, you're going to have to, at some point, take that science, take those ideas, and package them, put them into a product, then market and sell that product. Um, the way you do that, how you do that, how much money you make, you, you have all the choices in the world, but you're going to have to go through that stage. And I would argue that you, as the scientist or the technologist who came up with the idea in the first place, are actually the person best in, you know, best place to do that. Yes, you'll have to learn a bit of stuff about marketing and sales and finance, but trust me, if you can do you know, biophysics well, then that stuff is pretty easy. Um, so so I, I just sort of call out to people like that and say, look, if you should think about that opportunity, if that excites you, then you know, go and talk to the incubators, go and talk to VCs like ourselves, um, and you'll find that there's a whole body of people now who are ready to support you on that journey. That's fantastic to hear. And talking about impact on the real world, what, what do you say you would be, just to end on, yeah. most excited about at the moment in terms of what we're seeing develop? Yeah, I mean, there's so much. It's, it's really, I mean, you know, I think for, for me, as someone who learned to code at you know, the age of eight, um, you know, this, the, the world that we live in today, 30 years later, is, is remarkable. I mean, you know, computers are now at the heart of almost everything we do. Um, and I think it's the fact that they've been able to pervade every single industry that's sort of so exciting. Um, we've seen it with Uber and urban transportation. We've seen it with, you know, even simple concepts like accommodation within companies like Airbnb. I think that what excites me the most at the moment is the, um, the really interesting uh, connection we're seeing between computers and software and biology. Um, so, you know, we, we call it health tech at our firm, and we're active investors in that area. You know, one of the companies that I work with, Helix, is literally redefining the way that the pharmaceutical industry works. Because once you have computers that can make the connections that you used to have to have 100 scientists making, you can do things in a totally different way, and it changes all of the economics of that really important industry that has an impact on millions of people's lives. So, to me, that sort of area is just fascinating, and we're just at the beginning. Exciting and transformative. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. It's great to talk to you. Thank you, you too.